Hi, this is Brandon from Techie Dad, and if you like retro gaming like I do, but you don't want to shell out the money like the big stores want you to do, I can show you today how to use a Raspberry Pi to make your own station. Stay tuned. Alright, so first of all, this is uh, an image that's going to be run on a nice little device here. It's called the Raspberry Pi. Small little miniature computer. As you see, it's got the four USB ports, your network port, HDMI to go to your TV, your power cable, and if you choose a separate audio, if you want to convert it to a, direct to like a sound system or something like that. It uses a small port for the mini SD cards. Um, this currently is actually a Raspberry Pi 1, which does not have the wireless capability, but it serves its purpose just the same. Uh, they do have upgraded models. I think currently they're on the Raspberry Pi 3B, uh, which has wireless and Bluetooth capability. Um, but either way, like I said, this will serve the purpose. These kits sell for about about $25 to $35 depending on where you where you shop around to. Uh, you can also sometimes find them online with a few more items. Um, but basically, it just goes in this little nice little case. And if you have a 3D printer like mine, you can actually build a custom case. But uh, here we go. This is basically all you got to do. So we're going to open up a new browser. I find it easiest just to search for it. Retro Pi, it's pretty much the first one right there. And on their website, you basically just go to downloads, scroll down just a bit. And here's where they have for the Raspberry Pi 1 and for the 0, the little miniature um, one. And I can show you guys a picture of that in a minute too. Uh, and then they also have the image already pre-broken up for a Raspberry Pi 2 or 3. The 2 also does not have wireless capability, but it has got a expanded memory and a couple other benefits over the 1. But again, they built this image to be able to handle it all the way down to a 1, which is what we're going to use today. So all you do is click download. And it starts downloading. It's a little hard maybe to see in the bottom right corner here. Uh, the image currently is about 600 megs, so depending on how fast your internet speed is, it may take just a minute to download. We'll come back here in just a second. Okay, now that our image is downloaded, uh, I'm going to use WinRAR, but you can use any other type of uh, zipping utilities, like 7-Zip uh, works pretty good and it's free. Uh, you're basically going to extract your image. And again, depending on how well your uh, computer performs, it'll uh, take a minute to unpack. Okay, now that our file has been downloaded, uh, I launched a program I like to use uh, for writing the image itself to the memory card. It's called Etcher, and I'll include a uh, link down below. Um, but basically, you go in, select your image. We're going to select the RetroPie. And I've already got it selected, but you're going to make sure that whatever memory card device you're going to use, you have that selected. And then you click Flash. It may give you a security prompt just to run it as elevated permissions, just to make sure that everything, you know, writes correctly. And it starts. And now we're done. So, you get the nice green mark, so everything is good to go with this. Now what I like to do is take the memory card and it kind of half auto ejects to begin with. So I like to take it out and I've got mine in a little USB adapter. Plug it back in and you should see a boot directory. There's really nothing that you need to do with this. Uh, so we'll head over, plug it into the Pi, and get started. Alright, so now we're at the working borrowed TV station that I'm going to kind of hook everything up. So we've got our Raspberry Pi, we've got our memory card. You just basically slip it right in, and uh, 
on the Pi 1, it's got a spring loaded, so you got to make sure that it, it actually stays in. And we're going to hook this up. So I've already purchased a Super Nintendo controller with the USB. I personally like Super Nintendo more than uh, most every other game. So you can really pick any one of the four ports. It really doesn't matter. Uh, when you get further along and you want to start doing like multi-gaming, um, you can plug in all of them. I'm going to hook up our HDMI cable. And finally... Our power cable. Got to make sure the TV is on. All right, just making sure you can actually see it in the camera. Okay, and it's on. And you go to plug. And on first boot, it automatically resizes to the full size of the memory card. Um, so whatever size you end up choosing to use, that's the available storage space for all the games. Uh, currently, I've just got a 4 gig in there. It was that extra one that I had, so it made it easy for this. Um, it'll do this normal boot up on every, every time you power it on for the first time. Only takes a minute. You get the nice boot screen. Now keep in mind, auto Raspberry Pi 1 or 0, it is going to go just a little bit slow. But it won't affect the actual gameplay itself because all these ROMs uh, that you can put for the games are fairly small. So they don't take up much room anyway. So now, and keep in mind that this is the very first boot. It always takes longer because it's trying to configure everything. Uh, once we get a little bit more into the actual operation itself, uh, a reboot takes hardly any time. All right, now that it's booted up, it's actually showing that we need to, uh, it's already detected the, the gamepad, and it wants us to go ahead and configure it. So we're going to tell it, just like it says, hold the button to configure it. And it detects that it's already got most everything. So it's going to run you through some of them. Like it's asking for the up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder. We don't have anything for the left trigger, but we can press it again. And sometimes it reacts a little crazy so you may want to actually hook up a keyboard for the very first time now that we've got our image plugged in on our uh, SD card on the bottom of the Pi there is the memory card slot now keep in mind on our Raspberry Pi 1 it is spring loaded so it may take a minute just to make sure that it stays fully seated inside Raspberry Pi 2 and 3 you don't really have to worry about that I already have my game controller, a US, or a Super Nintendo knockoff with a USB connector. Now, the Raspberry Pi comes with four ports, which will allow for multi-controller uh, gaming, for those multiplayer games. For this instance, it doesn't really matter what port you're going to plug into, so just pick any one of them. Now, I would suggest that for the very first boot, you because it's going to start to configure it, you need a keyboard just so you have that extra control to escape out of the menu and to uh, properly control this. So all we have to do now is hook up the um, HDMI cable and the power cable and let it boot and we'll run through that first configuration which does take a few minutes for the first boot. Uh, basically it's going to expand the memory card um, from the file system so that whatever size memory card you put in here you have full capability to load up all the games. Uh, currently in here I just used a 4 gigabyte memory card. I had one extra. Um, these games are really small so even with a 4 gigabyte you can put a lot of games on here. Um, but again, so I'm going to let it boot and kind of record the process of it so you can see. Uh, I am going to speed it up because it does take a few minutes um, and then we'll get back to the next phase.
Okay, now that we got the first boot complete, now it's time to add the game files. So, according to the instructions, it says basically take any kind of USB stick formatted in uh, FAT32 or NTFS, put one folder in the root called RetroPie, and then plug that into the system, give it a minute to stop blinking, and then it'll create subfolders in that RetroPie folder with all the different versions of the emulators that are built into the whole system so then you can drop your ROMs and then have your game so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and join you back on the on the pie Okay, as you can see, we're in the Pi now, and I'm going to take the actual device and basically just plug in USB stick. You see it do, this one has a good light. It's making all the folders that we need. And once you get this steady blink like it's been doing for a little bit, we gave it a little bit of extra time to go ahead and complete. So now we're able to go ahead and disconnect. And we'll get back on the computer real quick. Alright, so we just put the USB stick back in. And if you uh, check out the RetroPie folder, you see now there's couple different folders, BIOS, configs, and ROMs. So these are going to be for some of the other specific emulators. Some of them need extra configuration files to fully run. If you go into the ROMs folder, there are a whole list of all the different types of emulators that are around. Say, for instance, the Super Nintendo. Currently, there's nothing in it, so I'm just going to copy over my ROM file real quick. And there's always some extra pop-ups when you're doing a lot with computers. And for at least this, I chose Super Mario World. And we put it in our Super Nintendo folder. And we can eject and go back to the RetroPie. Alright, so we're back where we left off with the RetroPie. Still nothing in here. I'm going to take our USB stick that we just copied the ROM file to. Plug it in. See it lighten up. Then we're just going to give it a minute. And if nothing comes up right away, kind of like it's doing now, the easiest thing to do at this point is go back to your menu. You're going to quit and restart the emulation station itself. Now it's not resetting the whole Pi. What it's actually doing is just the emulation station, which is what runs all of the ROMs themselves. And as you see now, we've got Super Nintendo listed. Just that quick. We're going to go ahead and select it. And as you see, Super Mario World is now listed. Go ahead and hit select. And as you can see, we're back in the game.
as you can see, the Raspberry Pi has a lot of capabilities that it can do. Um, with multiple controllers, you can do multi-game uh, platforms, um, such as the Super Nintendo, Classic Nintendo, or uh, Sega consoles, Sega Genesis, Sega Saturn. Uh, you can even do Nintendo 64, though if you do that, I, I would highly suggest using a Raspberry Pi 3 with the added processing power and make the game go a lot smoother. Um, but other than that, um, I hope you like what I've been able to show you today, that with just a little bit of configuration, you can have your own custom gaming console with all the games that you like and not be restricted to the ones that are only going out on retail that usually only have 10, 15 games. Um, this process is a little bit lengthy at first, but once you get it all set up, good to go. And you have plenty of game time for you and the kids. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, the content for this channel is going to be more focused on a dad doing into tech related items, uh, such as Pi, the printer, home security, different little things that as a dad you can take pride in and in introducing tech into the home and getting the kids involved. So if you like today's content, uh, please like or subscribe. And if you have any show content notes or suggestions of different directions to go in, please comment below and I hope you have a wonderful day.